Although the vast majority of evolutionary change took place before any human being was born, some examples are so fast that we can see evolution happening with our own eyes during one human lifetime. The Lizards of Podmakaru. There are two small islets off the Croatian coast called Podkopisti and Podmakaru. In 1971, a population of common Mediterranean lizards, Podarchis sicula, which mainly eat insects, was present on Podkopisti, but there were none on Podmakaru. In that year, experimenters transported five pairs of Podarchis sicula from Podkopisti and released them on Podmakaru. Then, in 2008, another group of mainly Belgian scientists associated with Anthony Herrell visited the islands to see what had happened. They found a flourishing population of lizards on Podmakaru, which DNA analysis confirmed were indeed Podarchis sicula. These are presumed to have descended from the original five pairs that were transported. Herald and his colleagues made observations on the descendants of the transported lizards and compared them with lizards living on the original ancestral island. There were marked differences. And what were the differences between the two island populations? Differences that had taken a mere 37 years or so to evolve. The Podmakaru lizards, the evolved population, had significantly larger heads than the original Podkopisti population. Longer, wider and taller heads. This translates into a markedly greater bite force. A change of this kind typically goes with a shift to a more vegetarian diet, and sure enough, the lizards of Podmakaru eat significantly more plant material than the ancestral type on Podkopisti. From the almost exclusive diet of insects still enjoyed by the modern Podkopisti population, the lizards on Podmakaru had shifted to a largely vegetarian diet, especially in summer. Why would an animal need a stronger bite when shifting to a vegetarian diet? Because plant, but not animal, cell walls are stiffened by cellulose. Herbivorous mammals, like horses, cattle and elephants, have great millstone-like teeth for grinding cellulose, quite different from the shearing teeth of carnivores and the needly teeth of insectivores. And they have massive jaw muscles and correspondingly robust skulls for the muscle attachments. Think of the stout midline crest along the top of a gorilla's skull. Vegetarians also have characteristic peculiarities of the gut, Animals generally can't digest cellulose without the aid of bacteria or other microorganisms, and many vertebrates set aside a blind alley in the gut called the cecum, which houses such bacteria and acts as a fermentation chamber. Now the fascinating thing is that although cecal valves don't normally occur in Podarchis sicula and are rare in the family to which it belongs, those valves have actually started to evolve in the populations of Podarchis sicula on Podmakaru, the population that has, for only the past 37 years, been evolving towards herbivory. I should repeat that the only thing that is really exceptional about this whole story, and the reason I'm telling it here, is that it all happened so extremely rapidly, in a matter of a few decades. Evolution before our very eyes. So basically, uh, you know, the point here is that uh, these lizards, they didn't, they didn't change due to uh, random variations that were selected for. Um, as I'm going to show in a more recent study on the uh, P. sicula lizards, um, these developmental changes are due to something that's called basically uh, plasticity or uh, phenotypical plasticity. Uh, basically what this means in short is uh, organisms or species have the ability to uh, adjust their phenotype based on changing environments. Um, it's sort of a uh, it's the reason they call it plasticity is it can bend a little bit in different directions. 
So it's, uh, it's basically something that the, the organism, it's already equipped with this a certain measure of adaptability to different environments. Uh, it has nothing to do with um, stumbled upon variations of any kind. Uh, like it's not related to that mechanism at all. Uh, and I've noticed this trend where evolutionists, they, they don't really warm up to plasticity because it, it doesn't pay homage to the random variation, natural selection, like neo-Darwinian process that they need. Um, phenotypic plasticity is, uh, it's environmentally induced. Uh, and it more reflects the systems that are already built into an organism uh, from the outset rather than any novelties that uh, are stumbled upon by evolutionary mechanisms. So anyways, uh, I'm going to read now this new article. The title of this article is Anatomical and Physiological Changes Associated with a Recent Dietary Shift in the Lizard Podarchus Sicula uh, by Bart Vervust et al. And this was in January 2010 in Physiological and Biochemical Zoology. So the abstract. Dietary shifts have played a major role in the evolution of many vertebrates. The idea that the evolution of herbivory is physiologically constrained in squamates is challenged by a number of observations that suggest that at least some lizards can overcome the putative physiological difficulties of herbivory on evolutionary and even ecological timescales. We compared a number of morphological and physiological traits purportedly associated with plant consumption between two island populations of the lacerated lizard Podarchus sicula. Previous studies revealed considerable differences in the amount of plant material consumed between those populations. We continued the investigation of this study system and explored the degree of divergence in morphology, uh, dentition, gut morphology, digestive performance, gut passage time, digestive efficiency, and ecology, endosymbiont density. In addition, we also performed a preliminary analysis of the plasticity of some of these modifications. Our results confirm and expand early, earlier findings concerning divergence in the morphology of feeding structures between two island populations of P. sicula lizards. In addition to the differences in skull dimensions and the prevalence of cecil valves previously reported, these two recently diverged populations also differ in aspects of their dentition and the lengths of the stomach and small intestine. <clears throat> the plasticity experiment suggests that at least some of the changes associated with a dietary shift toward a higher proportion of plant material may be plastic. Our results also show that these morphological changes effect effectively translate into differences in digestive performance. The population with the longer digestive tract exhibits longer gut passage time and improved digestive efficiency. Uh, so the keywords in that abstract are um, plasticity, um, like I mentioned before. The organism is, uh, the changes are induced by the environment. In addition, we also performed a preliminary analysis of the plasticity of some of these modifications. By examining individuals from pod Makaru after they had been fed an exclusively arthropod diet, we sought to test whether the changes in gut morphology are reversible and hence plastic. So basically what they're saying is um, they wanted to take these lizards that were on the Pod Makaru Island with the plant diet. They wanted to bring them back, introduce them back into uh, an insect diet and see if all those changes reverted based on uh, the 
being changed back to their original diet. So, and that's basically what they found uh, in the discussion here. Uh, many comparative studies have tacitly assumed that the distinctive features of plant-eating lizards, large body size, skull dimensions, special dentition, gut morphology, are a product of genetic adaptation to special demands of plant-based diet. So they're saying there, like I, like I said before, people were just assuming these were genetic changes that were selected for. But going on, our results suggest that in P. sicula, at least some of these changes associated with a dietary shift toward a higher proportion of plant material may be plastic. Specimen, specimens from the pod macaro populations, which in nature can eat substantial amounts of plant material, exhibited a reduction in digestive tract length and a total loss of cecil valves after having been fed an exclusively anthropod diet for 15 weeks. Although parts of their gastrointestinal systems were still better developed than those of specimens feeding mainly on arthropods in the wild, it seems likely that a prolonged exposure to an animal-based diet would have erased even those differences. These observations call for a more flexible view of the digestive system in lizards. Yeah, basically their, their predictions were confirmed that moving the lizards back to an insect diet, all these new changes uh, immediately reverted. Um, and after only 15 weeks, you know, like three months, all those developments had reverted back. Uh, obviously that wasn't due to random genetic variations or anything. So it goes on to talk a little more about plasticity. Plasticity of gastrointestinal morphology and function has long been described in birds. Gut morphology and performance in these animals vary seasonally in concert with changes in internal demand. Uh, reproduction, migration, hibernation, or environmental conditions, food availability, nutrient composition. In reptiles, there's evidence that digestive function may change in response to dietary demands on ontogenetic, seasonal, and instantaneous timescales. Many reptiles shift toward a more herbivorous diet as they age. At least in some of these species studied, this ontogenetic dietary shift is accompanied by changes in digestive efficiency. Reptiles living in a seasonal environment have been described as regulating their digestive apparatus according to activity or prey availability. And in snakes and other reptiles with irregular feeding patterns, eating is followed by an immediate upregulation of digestive functions resulting in an increased mass of the small intestine and intensified enzyme activity and brush border transport rates. All of these observations suggest that many lineages of vertebrae, including lizards, exhibit considerable phenotypic plasticity in the morphology and physiology of their digestive system. In these lineages, dietary shifts from carnivory to omnivory, as observed in many lizard families, may constitute less of an evolutionary challenge than previously thought. So, yeah, phenotypic plasticity. Uh, what that really looks like, you know, just objectively when you look at it, what that is, is you're seeing organisms that uh, they have design specifications that allow them to adapt to shifting environments. These cases of rapid evolution have nothing to do with selected variations. They're, they're all uh, plastic events. They're, they're all directly induced by the environment. And evolutionists don't like that because that can't explain the origin of complex structures.